Hey guys, so today I am standing in front of our peach tree <laughs> and I have several things on my list over here that I've written down on my phone and there's still more that I didn't write down. It's a huge list that needs to be done before the snow starts falling over here. We just, our fall season is starting so we have to hurry up and get things ready and one of the things that I need to address is this peach, peach tree over here. It's drizzling a little bit. Hopefully it's not going to rain. This is the only time I have to do this. Right now the kids are taking care of their sister inside. They just finished their, some of their um, schoolwork and um, they're helping me a little bit with, our, with the little one. So this peach tree, I was giving up on it and this spring I thought I didn't fertilize it but I think I did and I also sprayed it. And it looks so healthy. The only problem is that it keeps leaning over. Last year I tried to stake it down. I put a, uh, a metal post down in the ground and I tied the tree uh, and I tied it to the metal post and I pulled it with all my, my might and my strength and uh, the tree just kept leaning over. I even tamped down the root ball. I filled in the area with dirt and I just kept pushing in dirt and that just as you can see I mean I will show you in a second it's it's practic it's touching the ground it is really touching the ground I mean it is at like a 30 degree angle the um, so here the the trunk of the tree is sort of like that and it's pretty terrible and um, I even put it outside of our electric fence because I just thought I'm giving up on it because it's not doing great and I don't care if it's gonna die let it die but it's producing so many peaches and it looks so healthy with exception for the trunk um, leaning like the Tower of Pisa and even worse so I believe there are two reasons that caused this uh, first one is we had some peach boring insects that went into the trunk so what I did is I came with after I figured out that was the case I came with some hydrogen peroxide and some rubbing alcohol not isopropyl but rubbing alcohol because the isopropyl alcohol will actually kill the tree uh, so I used both of these I mixed them together and I poured them directly into the hole to kill anything that was in there because I didn't want to mess with scraping them out because usually that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to scrape out all the sap that they put inside because that's where they lay their lar larva and then the larva starts feeding on the trunk on the inside and it just rots out the trunk um, so like I said I just poured the isopropyl uh, no not isopropyl the rubbing alcohol and the hydrogen peroxide together directly into the hole I might have done it on separately but I did put these two things into the hole where the uh, where the insects put made the hole and uh, I made sure to scrape the top to make sure that they would come in uh, on the inside and another reason why I believe this tree is leaning over is this is the area where we have our well this area gets super wet in the spring to the point where it is like you're stepping into a swamp almost this is what it feels like your your shoe is sinking into the ground and you're hearing the sloshing of the of the the mud under your shoe sole and the sole of your shoes and um, and also I mean every time we come here in the spring it is super muddy super wet and uh, this area is infested with ticks usually because of that and I'm a little nervous because tick season is starting and I'm not wearing boots because I don't have the right boots for <laughs> uh, to, to wear my my boots are destroyed so anyways regardless so those two things I believe cause the tree to just lean over like that so what I'm gonna do is I need to find uh, something instead of tying the tree and pulling it up and tying it to a post or something like that I want to put something under the tree and kind of lift the trunk so this is the trunk this way so I want to grab like a piece of wood that has kind of like a slingshot shape and I want to put it under the tree and kind of push it to pull the push it back to pull the trunk so that it would be more standing and of course we have deer here so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to protect the tree maybe with some 
uh, what do you call them? Some chicken wire fencing or something like that so that the deer won't eat the peaches because we like them. They're good. Um, and it's a really, I mean, it's, it's full. I've been harvesting off of it even though they're green just because I like sour peaches and it's thinning the tree so they, the other peaches get a chance to grow bigger um, and mature and produce good peaches for us. So right now I need to go around and look for a stick that's a sort of like maybe a branch or something like that that looks like this and put it over here under the tree and fix it and I'll show you how we're doing that. There are other things that I need to do also that are on my list. I'm not sure if I will be doing these in this video or if I'm going to be putting them in a separate video. I'm having a really hard time filming because we just started our school season and uh, it's a little hectic <laughs> in this time because you know between the house and the school and a lot of chores on the homestead that you don't really need to see because it just becomes repetitive and boring uh, so it's I'm having a hard time finding a balance so maybe I just need to find a day where I just film several videos that's gonna be hard because I have a toddler also so I'm gonna have to figure out a way I don't know last week I wasn't able to film really for you I just put out a video with a garden tour you can go ahead and check that out uh, but for now let me go and find something before it starts raining really hard to fix this tree so I said I want to show you and I totally forgot you can see you see how the trunk is leaning over and I believe if the branches here are not touching the ground this tree by now would be totally on the ground and I think the reason why it's leaning over this much is because of all the peaches that are on it they're creating a heavy weight so this area is soft because of the water for this cardboard over here to block the grass from growing because I can't really mow around it and I'd have to come with a weed whacker but this is where um, I think it's covered now but it was here somewhere uh, this is where these insects created a hole into the tree trunk and uh, affected it. I mean, um, it still seems healthy. I really gave up on it this this season. But look, these branches are healthy. These are new branches. Uh, and it looks like something is climbing over here. Maybe a squirrel and eating them. Uh, but look at all these peaches. Look at this. And I've been harvesting off of them also. This is very heavy. All right, so let's go ahead and find that branch or whatever it is to help this tree. So I find, found this tall branch over here. I'm hoping this would work. It was in our wood burning pile over here and these are oh, some invasive uh, uh, plants. I forgot what it's called. Uh, it has a name. They produce these poisonous purple berries. They look pretty but they're just pretty invasive. Anyways, um, so this uh, trunk over here, or not trunk, yeah it is sort of a trunk. I think it was, I forgot from what tree it was. Uh, but it, I like this because it has a wide base over here and you see the branching over here. I'm not sure if I want which one I want to cut so I'll have to see first uh, try it on the tree and try to fit it and see if it works out. I might need to use a T-post to hold this in place. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what I will have to do. And I'm going to cut these branches maybe up around here and uh, kind of create like a fork shape maybe and try that out. Um, I don't know if I can cut this with the lopper. This one is pretty wide over here so maybe I'll just cut these up and I can cut it right here with the lopper. Um, that might provide extra support anyways and hopefully it won't break. It seems I feel like it's rotting but we'll try it out and see anyways. So I got a whole bunch of T-posts and I'm going to leave them right here because I think I might need them. I have a plan to put around the tree. I actually have something that we 
are going to be using for another project but it's not gonna hurt to use it around the tree just to protect it at least we'll see I'm not sure I might find find something else I got my loppers uh, all right so I said I'm I think I'm gonna take it off down over here so I think I'm going to give it a little more room because I feel like I'll probably be using this end rather than this end. We'll see. So I'm going to cut it right over here. Put this one out. This one right here. And then I'm gonna cut it right here. I think I can get it with the loppers. There we go. I think this should do. We're gonna try it out and see. I'm hoping it would work. You know what? I forgot my gloves. Let me go grab them. Let the struggle begin. I think that's all I'm going to be able to raise it up to, at least for now. I don't want to do too much disturbance to the roots because if I raise it too much, then the roots underneath are also going to be moving. Uh, I felt the roots moving already. I also saw some of that sap on the top, so 
I'm gonna have to address that also probably not today because it's raining today but maybe on a different day when it's not raining and I need to remember that so I have to write that on my list I need to create a whole <laughs> a huge list of tasks to be done because there is so much I feel like I need a crew in here honestly but I can't I can't have a crew because I just simply can't afford a crew <laughs> so uh, me it is <laughs> So let me go ahead and take you and show you what I did. Um, maybe I might need to do something else. I feel like that's not gonna be super stable. I have to do some adjustments to it, uh, but it might hold it up just, just enough for me. So let me go ahead and show you what I did. So you can see, like I said, I used this part where it was wider, the part of the fork where it was wider so it fits the trunk pretty well in there. The problem that I was facing is I thought this wide base is going to help but what I'm finding is that it's sliding on the wet grass and uh, I thought oh maybe I could dig a hole for it and put it in but then I thought well it is already rotting and if I dig a hole it's going to rot even faster. Uh, so um, this is here but the problem is there are rocks everywhere and there's a rock here also. So I'm going to get the T-post driver and see if I can drive this in deeper because sometimes there are little rocks where you can't actually push it in by hand but you might be able to push it with the T-post driver. Uh, but you know if you live in New England then you know rocks are everywhere. And then I put these two over here so that uh, because I feel like this thing is going to teeter and I feel like these two are probably not enough and I'm afraid that's going to create a strain over here if a wind comes or whatever and the branch, this branch over here is going to go this way or that way and I want, it's going to bre break because of the force that's going to be applied on these two T-posts but they, they give so maybe not, I don't know and I was thinking if they were at the same point facing each other then it would be less likely that it would break uh, but I was having a hard time putting it in at the uh, parallel line uh, because, of course, rocks again. So uh, this is how it is right now. So I need to go grab the T-post driver and try to do that. I've never done that myself and I think the branch is going to probably prohibit, prohibit me from driving these two into the ground. I mean, this one is pretty much in that one there's a rock there so we'll see what i can do but i feel like this is a lot better than what it was uh, and all i have to do right now after i drive the t-posts in is protect the tree from the deer because of course when the deer come they are going to pull on the branches because that's what they're going to eat and the fruit and they're going to drive the tree even more down but you can see, I mean, look at these leaves. Oh, there's a slug. Ew. Oh, look at these leaves. They're so healthy. This is the healthiest that the tr this tree has ever been, with exception for the trunk. Since we moved in, this tree looked like it was dying. So I've been working on it for years. And, I mean, finally, it's looking healthy. Look at it. But it's so sad. And to be honest, I wasn't super sad about it going because it's not the tastiest peaches I've ever had in my life. There are varieties that are better and I don't know what the names of the varieties are in the United States so I need to find out what those varieties are that I like. I guess I'll just have to like go to orchards and try them and ask uh, what they are. Maybe that would be the best way to find out what those varieties are because I am planning on planting a peach tree in the front yard in our what-to-be new orchard because I have a feeling that all these trees that are going that are in this area over here eventually are going to come to an end because they are in a very moist area and as you know if you do know uh, tree um, apples and pears are prone to fire blight and I think other types of blights so with a wet area like that, they're probably going to be more prone to that. Now I have a tree over here that that came also with the house. I think the first owners of this house 
planted that tree and I have a feeling this tree has a fire blight because you can see all the leaves are down it's I mean we just started it this is September 13th so this tree over here looks like it has fire blight I've never seen fire blight in person but from the research that I've done it looks like it might be fire blight I mean the trees the leaves on top are crispy a lot of the leaves have fallen down and there's like black spots all over the the trunk of the tree so it's a possibility and I don't want this to spread uh, for the other trees that we have over here again with the apples and the pears so I we might have to take that tree down I don't know it's it's sad I mean this tree has never been healthy it never gave any fruit and um, my father one time when he visited us in the United States he kind of like chopped the tree down <laughs> to nothing almost um, you can kind of see the nibs and I think that uh, what happened then is the tree flushed with tons of growth and that um, caused mold on the inside because we didn't come and thin it in the spring it was like just tons of leaves everywhere little tiny leaves everywhere didn't make any fruits that year of course because they fruit on old wood and uh, took it about like this year it started making fruit I saw I see one fruit on top I sprayed it uh, with organic spray with with the both uh, uh, fung fungicide and with the insecticide but I have a feeling this tree is just not going to make it. I mean, it's like right at the edge of the woods, which eventually we're going to be clearing that area. We found we got a landscape, a, a land surveyor to help us find out where our property lines were, just to kind of know where we can expand and where we shouldn't expand, because we, you know, it's helpful to know <laughs> where where our property is, so that we can figure out what to do, where to, and where to do it. So. We'll see. They might be coming down. I see a lot of trees that are dying on this side of me over here. And I have plans for this whole area for really for our entire garden. But it's going to take me years. And, you know, unless we have the budget for it to, to hire someone to do all this for us, it's just going to take us years to do it. So uh, I don't know, maybe uh, showers, uh, rains of money will start falling down from the sky and will help us do it all and we can hire people, but <laughs> until <laughs> for now we just have to do it ourselves. And that's okay too, you know, it's the, I take joy in the journey of doing things slowly because it's a pleasure to, for, to me to be outside and to work in the garden and enjoy the creation of God and see the butterflies and the birds and hear, listen to the animals and the insects and you know it's just it's beautiful and I love this life and every time I'm out here I remember my grandfather because he basically lived in his garden he, he even had a bed in his garden uh, and he would go and lie down and every time I would go to visit my grand grandparents I'd see my grandfather lying in his bed in his garden watering his plants and that was just the most beautiful thing and I always have memories of that and it brings me so much joy and it brings a smile to my face and you know I just this is a way how I can um, sort of live the legacy of my grandfather and remember him my parents are also great gardeners and they just have done a lot I've also learned a lot from them so you know it's uh, I enjoy this journey it's okay and I think I hope you guys would enjoy this journey with me too it's not perfect but it's my journey and I think God makes all things perfect so let's get uh, this work done over here I have to be done before it's too late and I don't have a lot of time I'm chatting too much <laughs> I have to get back and finish teaching the kids and um, you know they finished all their major work it's just now parts that I have to do with them which is like read alouds and stuff like that not a big deal uh, we could do that in the evening even it's not a big deal all right enough chatting let's go ahead and get this done
I feel like I need another post right here because I feel like it's going to slip, slip on this end. So I'm going to grab one and put it right here at the base of the this thing. And you know what? I'm going to put one on the opposite side just in case if it decides to slip that way. There we go. So let me show you what I did. There. So you see this is the base right here of this uh, structure that I'm using to support the tree. And what I did is, uh, you can see this wide base right here. So I put one T-post on this end, another on this end, and another on this end. So in case if this wants to slip in any direction, it's not going to be able to because the T-posts are going to stop it from slipping. Now, I feel like this is not very sound structure. So eventually it is going to break. But for now, until the peaches are ripe and ready for us to harvest, I think it should do well and it should hold up the tree enough. And I'm hoping it would hold up in the winter. So we do have get heavy snow sometimes. I hope that the tree would hold up in the heavy snow. I'm not sure that it would, but that's my hope anyways. I'm going to be leaving the structure and the T posts in here and uh, I'm also going to be leaving the protection around it so that the deer won't pull on it and cause the tree to keep falling even more down because especially in the fall the deer get super hungry and they just eat everything everywhere and anything so um, in fact uh, my in my vegetable garden because there's some maintenance that needs to be, do, be done on the fence and I think I'll be filming that in a separate video. Uh, the deer are coming in and they're starting to eat some of my crops so I have to do some stuff to kind of prevent them from doing that and uh, just some quick stuff uh, which I have an idea of what to do and you can watch that in the video that will come up. I'm not sure when <laughs> because it's going to be a separate video. I haven't even filmed it yet. But anyways, um, so I'll be doing some stuff to prevent them from coming in until I can finish the maintenance on the fence. Anyways, I just don't want them to eat my vegetable garden and I don't want them to, you know, break this peach tree. And I'm hoping, do I really want to take a cutting from, from this? I was hoping to take a cutting. I did have some, some sprouts that like planted themselves from this tree because when I was pregnant with my uh, youngest, I got super sick. Uh, morning sickness and I wasn't able to get to the peaches so they all rotted so we ended up tossing them as compost. I was planning on like getting to them and um, canning them because the kids like that and uh, I just wasn't able to and they all rotted so when we put them in the ground several of them sprouted because you know the seed matured and rotted and it went in the ground and I saved some of them but then I planted them in a pot I had fungus gnats in it and I think that just killed them because the fungus gnats eat roots so anyways so that plan got scratched now I have to find I think instead of cut taking cuttings I'm just gonna stick with my plan of finding a new variety of peaches that I actually like because I mean this variety is okay but it's not the best so Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you before we continue this. Let me show you. So this is here. This is our just giant compost pile. I toss all the weeds and just some really like thin branches in here to decompose over time. And uh, before when we moved in, this is um, where the previous owners used to toss their compost pile. But uh, unfortunately, I, I have also seen some pots and some trash in there. Eventually I'll get to them, but I can't because there's poison ivy in the back. But this is what happens when we toss compost in here. There's a tomato plant or several that are growing in here and it already has tomatoes on it. And uh, honestly didn't care if it did or not. I was just tossing stuff and uh, I didn't care if I broke it or not, but it's doing it and there are green tomatoes and maybe they'll ripen. I don't know, but it's pretty cool. So what I'm doing with this compost pile is I'm just putting in green 
brown, green, brown. And um, if I have dirt that I'm getting rid of, I put in here and it just creates um, layers and it keeps it going down and the rain waters it and it just slowly decomposes. Um, so if I need some good dirt for somewhere, this would be the place where I would get it where I would get it from. So now I'm going to go look for a structure to put around the tree. Maybe a chicken wire fencing or something of the sort. I have something in mind but I'm not sure I can get it over here and control it. It's the cattle panel fencing that I have on the... let me see if I can show you. Uh, on the trellises over there that we built and those are super heavy um, they're very heavy duty so I don't think I can control it especially by myself and the ends are super sharp so I don't want to hurt myself maybe I'll, if I can't do that today what I'll do is I'll wait for my husband on the weekend but then the deer might eat the tree and pull it down so I really need to figure something out let's just go to the barn find something and come back here. So we have this electric fencing that we got for the chickens and it doesn't really work because they can get through it but I think it might work for the deer and hello <laughs> and I think this is what I'm going to put around it because it might be easy for me to maneuver it and it's gonna be temporary it's not gonna be forever of course I will have to take this down but you see this cattle fencing behind me over here. This is super heavy duty. And if I try to manage this on my own, I'm going to hurt myself. It needs two people, um, some, sometimes maybe even more, uh, because it's heavy and it's sharp and it rolls on itself. So you have to have to use force in order to um, pull it away from itself. So I'm gonna grab this over here and take it up to the tree and try to put it around it somehow. <laughs> we'll see. fence is a little flimsy so I'm going to be getting some more maybe wooden posts or something like that just to stick in the ground to kind of give it a shape. Now the deer don't necessarily need an electric fence to keep them out. They hate tight spaces uh, so if I just have something to kind of confine the tree and have them not be able to reach the branches of the tree I think this should be enough and also a place where they can't jump in uh, and get into the area and start eating from the tree because that's what's happening in, uh, in my vegetable garden is that there are some places where the deer can jump in and so I have to kind of figure out something for them to stop them from jumping in especially because right now the electric fence is, isn't really operating how it should be because of the grass that's touching the bottom. So let me go grab some wooden posts and stick them in the ground and I think I need to grab the T-Post driver again because I totally forgot that I might need it so uh, I have to go grab it again and then we'll uh, finish this job. I forgot that I had these. I actually bought these to stake my tomatoes because I was planning on <laughs> staking some of the tomatoes that didn't have any stakes and then life happened of course. So I'm going to be, use the, uh, be using these to support the fence and also these are going to provide another way to scare the deer away from the tree because deer are kind of skittish they don't whenever they come and touch something that uh, that is unexpected that wasn't there when they visited the area before they get scared and they step away from it usually when they get used to it sometimes they get more curious and they want to come in and i think that's what happened over here with the fence especially because there's no electric fence on it 
I mean, the, the electricity is not working on it, so we, we could have fixed that problem again. Um, all right, so let's drive these posts in the ground and get the job done. So these uh, stakes are kind of like a spear. They have an end over here that's a little pointy, so it's easier to drive it into the ground. But when you do have tall grass like we do over here, because I haven't mowed it in like a month, which is okay because the bees are enjoying the flowers and the grass, uh, then it gets a little bit harder to drive it into the, into the ground. But it's all right. Just use a little bit of force and it will work, and it works. So now I have this big pile of fencing that's left over, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and toss it over to the opposite side of the fence without touching the fence, hopefully, uh, where it would be sitting on some uh, landscaping fabric because I don't want the grass to grow through it because then what happens is it becomes a really tangly mess and it would be super difficult to pull it out and uh, so I have to do this because the grass is just going to keep growing. So let's go ahead and do it. There's a small spot right there where I can, I think I can put it, so I'm going to try doing that. Now, of course, there's always going to be grass under it and I would have to take it out and clean up the grass in that area and I'm going to have to do that this week, I think. Uh, hopefully I can get to it, we'll see. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and there are some areas, especially where the, under the fence, the grass is too tall. So we'll, we'll just have to kind of manage it and stuff. But let me show you what I did to prevent the electric fence from touching this fence over here, which also, by the way, can be electrified. This is from Premier One Fencing, but I think they got, gave us the wrong type of fencing that we asked for. From what I've seen in the Premier Fencing online, they seem to have good fencing, but the ones we got, they're, they seem just super flimsy. I'm not sure if it's a different type we ordered or... If you guys have any experience with Premier Fencing, please let us know because we want to have some good fencing for different purposes around the homestead over here. So just let us know. Right now, let me show you what I did to prevent the fences from touching each other. So you can see right here, this is where this fence, the electric fence uh, that we have around our vegetable garden, that ends, that's the bottom line over here. So to prevent these two fences from touching each other, um, and uh, possibly preventing a short because I'm not sure how they would react with each other. My husband would 
know better about this stuff but I think I'm right on this because these over here have metal posts touching them and that's uh, well on the other end over there and I think uh, that's gonna be a problem if we have that so uh, to prevent that uh, to prevent them from touching each other I just uh, took two rocks and I put them over this fence over here that went under the um, electric fence and I dragged it all the way over there um, I'll just adjust it a little bit and uh, just to be able to walk around I'll just push it a little bit over here uh, but I just want to make sure it is in an area where not tons of grass is going to grow in between it and around it and stuff like that so that it's easy to pull it back out because I'm not going to be using that in here I could I suppose but it's I don't want to it's just <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of work so um, I think this might be easier especially when I want to take this down uh, to mow the area around it or to weed whack it um, I think this is this is better so let me just give you a wide view of this so that you guys can see what it looks like right now and this is from this angle over here you could see the peach tree is a little bit far so uh, the uh, um, deer can't stretch their necks that far and and reach in I might actually maybe I should just maybe I should just push this one out a little bit let's try tiny bit out there might be better there yeah I think that might be better all right so you can see it's not tons of space in here they won't feel comfortable jumping in here I think I'm hoping I believe so um, and uh, it's not touching the fence on this side again I'll have to weed whack over here and um, this again you can see the structure that's supporting it with the slingshot shape like that with a Y shape and the T posts that are supporting this branch over here stopping it from slipping because again if I dig it into the ground that part is going to rot yes that would rot eventually but it's gonna last a lot longer than if I dig it in the ground because this area gets super wet and again here just so you, you guys can see there's plenty of space over here now small animals can crawl here of course but I'm talking about the deer I don't want the deer to get in here because that would be a problem and small animals can easily crawl in between this also we could electrify this if we want to but I'm not sure how and my head my husband would know better about this and I I don't know if it's worth it honestly at this point uh, I do have to prune it I did grab pruners oh, I put them over there but I do need some um, some rubbing alcohol so to disinfect my pruners so I can prune the dead branches off the peach tree and you can see this side over here there's plenty of space where the deer won't be able to reach the tree but at the same time won't be able to jump in this is not high enough for the deer to not jump in but it's restricted enough for them to not want to jump in you want to have like six feet tall fences if you don't want or seven feet I think tall fences if you don't want the deer to jump in uh, but if you have a tight area they're less likely to jump in so I hope this video was helpful to you guys I hope you learned something new and uh, I hope uh, if you are facing a deer problem or a peach tree problem or any tree problem like I am over here that this uh, maybe helped you in some way and uh, if you like these videos please share them with other people so that they too can learn and grow and uh, if you like this content please hit the like button and um, this will encourage YouTube to show it to more people so that more people can find these videos and uh, learn life skills that we teach over here and I want to thank you guys so much for being here for watching and for commenting and for liking uh, for your support as always and um, again thank you for watching if you are new don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell see you again next time and a new video bye